I liked it. Very different. <laughs> okay. Today we have Reverend Carol Willis today. I did get to know Reverend Carol in my spiritual classes when I was taking them here at Center of Enlightenment. She had a way of telling such wonderful stories. They came alive and often had value learned. In her stories about herself, she showed her compassion and kindness in helping others. Also, she has a unique ability of creating beautiful prayers. It seems she was born to have the job of being a minister far before she became one. And she is also the treasurer of the COE board and assistant to the senior minister, Reverend Keith. So she has a wonderful background in the Unity uh, Church with um, the youth and family ministry and pastoral care, metaphysics, prayer and meditation. So you have a huge background. Without further ado, I give you Reverend Carolyn. Thank you, Reverend Marie. It's always a pleasure to be here and be able to share experiences and my personal journey. Um, but before I get into that, um, I wanted to share with you, most of you know that my birthday was last Sunday and my friend, Reverend Peggy, took me out to breakfast the day before and gave me a birthday card on the front of it is a picture of a golden retriever, and he has a, a roll of paper in his mouth. And you open the card and says, want me to bury your birth certificate? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm getting to the age where I might say yes. So. <laughs> Reverend Kathleen Hellenberg sent me a card, and it said something about um, I was going to bring it, and I forgot. But um, women that speak their mind, um, and you you open it up and it says, um, uh, we'll be living forever because we're the kind of people that speak our mind, you know? <laughs> so that was really kind of funny. It was better to read the card. But anyway, um, over the past year, I have been struggling with reframing erroneous perceptions that created unhappy life experiences. At my job, some of my responsibilities were given to other people. Instead of having responsibility and control over my area and my job, I am now receiving assignments from someone else. You can only imagine how that sets with me, you know. Others now have the authority and the control I once had. And I counted this as a loss and wasn't handling the stripping of job duties very well. I was really struggling with this. Um, and I kept thinking, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Why is this ball not in my court anymore? And I was just kind of starting to get um, over this in my mind and my emotions. I wasn't quite there yet. And then I injured my left knee. And I experienced a great deal of pain with that. Now, in September... Um, Aaron Wallace was here at Center of Enlightenment with a presentation on health and spirituality. And I had an epiphany that night during the class. Aaron had us working on healing loss. And boom, there was the spiritual two by four right in the side of my head. There it was what the cause of the problem was, what the cause of my pain was. And after a few mind exercises about releasing and healing loss, I got up and I walked around the sanctuary. Remember that, Lisa? 
Um, I walked around the sanctuary where I had limped in. Um, I had inner healing work that needed to be done. And I didn't really realize that my holding on to some of these losses was the cause of my pain. In order for healing to take place, I needed to shift my perception on what was really happening and not on what I thought was happening and what I thought was happening to me. I know I am not alone when it comes to basing my life on out of focus perceptions, erroneous judgments, hurt feelings, and so on and so on. We've all done it. We've all been there and we've all struggled and we're, we've all felt the pain of those experiences. My knee injury is connected to a long line of losses that need to be healed at the root cause, which are the thoughts, the emotions and reactions and perceptions to life events. What was my motivation to change or shift my perception of events? It's a four letter word, it's called pain. And the need for relief from that pain. I just wanna say, if it gets to be physical pain, it's already been mental and emotional pain. Because when those two agree, you have a physical result. So pain is experienced on multiple levels, mental, emotional, physical. So by the time it gets to physical, we have really put a lot of power into creating that. One day I yelled at God, God, I've had enough. I've had enough. I can't take this pain anymore. Something has to change right now. I'm done. Like me yelling at God is going to change anything. <laughs> Like he's going to stop whatever he's doing and say, okay, um, and, and get his attention or that he makes anything different. But in that moment, I had decided for myself that I wanted something better. God, this has to stop now. I'm done with this. I want something better. So in that moment, I kind of came to myself. And a big shift happened. I was done with that. It wasn't going, I wasn't going to be a victim of my self-imposed pain any longer. I had, I had um, a chance to heal and be free. I had really made a choice in that yelling at God <laughs> that I wanted something better, that I was done with that other. In Romans 12, 2, the Bible states, do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And in Proverbs, Proverbs 23, 7, the Bible says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. My misdirected faith believed I was being wrongly treated. Others had power and I had none. However, I realized we always have the power to change and control our, our thoughts and feelings. When I began to look at events differently, I understood things differently. And things began to change. I began to change. I was able to reframe the picture of events to line up with the truth of the situation. I could shift my perception from myself and my pain to why events happened and what was the real reason. And the real reason is that the company was growing and expanding and that prompted the um, redefining and redistribution of duties. 
it had nothing to do with me. It had nothing to do with that I did anything wrong or that I didn't do it properly or that I hadn't performed my duties. It was about none of that. But I had just been unwilling to release that to the growth and the expansion of the company. Um, and it was all good. You know, it was all going to get done. It just wasn't going to necessarily be done by me, which is okay. Shifting our perception starts with willing to experience something different and better than what is presently in our life. That desire for something better is put in our heart by God to begin with. And God also guides us to the fulfillment of that desire. But we must do the work from desire to fulfillment. Our work begins with these questions, and I always ask myself questions. Are we willing to let go of what is hurting us and causing pain? Are we willing to see and believe life to be different? Are we willing to believe we desire to be healed? Are we willing to be free and know the truth? Are we willing to be abundantly blessed? But I think one of the biggest things is, are we willing to believe we deserve something better? If the answer, if the answers are yes, we can surrender to the healing process and release what no longer serves us. When we know the truth, we are set free to be our best self and live our best life. When we hurt, we are being shown that we need to change. First, our mindset, which is our thoughts and our, free, our feelings. Somehow we have gotten off the track with our thinking and feeling. We can decide to shift our perception by changing our mind. But no one can do this for us. Even if somebody tells us you need to change, they can't do it for us. We must commit to doing it ourselves with love, forgiveness, and gratitude. Lately, in many of my spiritual counselings, I have suggested to clients to stay in love and gratitude. This raises the consciousness out of the problem and into a different vibration where he healing can take place. A Course in Miracles has a lesson that says, today I walk in love and gratitude. A unity minister shared this thought several years ago in a lesson, and I have never forgotten this. Today I walk in love and gratitude. This is a powerful affirmation of truth. And I invite you now to say it with me three times. Today, I walk in love and gratitude. Today, I walk in love and gratitude. Today, I walk in love and gratitude. It's really the truth. We don't have to continue in pain. We all have the ability, the power to change to let go of pain, to heal, and to be a healer to others. I believe we all have begun our journey to heal just by knowing that we need and we want something better. For if we know that, that's a sign that we're being prompted by spirit to come up higher to have a better experience, to live our best life. And I am working on my knee. It is better, um, but I believe at some point it's going to be better than better. It's going to be terrific. So I thank you for joining us this morning and I thank you for your attention. God bless you on your healing journey. 
and I thank you. Thank you very much.